Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom and in peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Now I want to do a quick hit you know, on the first few verses of Daniel 7. Obviously, we're going to go into, um, or you know, we already have, but we'll put it up, Lord, within, on um, Saturday. And then we did a street speaking, me and the brother Razan. And focus more so on the uh, leopard. That's what we wanted to make the um, like the key, the uh, main focus of the lesson. But we want to get into. Well, I want to get into this now. Yeah. Anyway, so Daniel seven, and let me turn up my brightness so I can properly see it. Daniel seven and verse one. It says, "In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head upon his bed, and that is said Then he wrote the dream and told them some of the matters." Yeah, so it all, it's all through the spirit of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai and the testimony of Yahweh Shai is that spirit of prophecy. Yeah, so even though you'll say, oh, oh you weren't, but you know, so called bugged out Christians, the bugged out so called Christians will say, oh, that's the Old Testament. Well, all these prophecies, you know, whether they've been fulfilled or they're still yet to be fulfilled, that is what the testimony of Yahweh Shai you know, bears witness unto the truth. You know, and it's, it's, it's gonna, it basically proves you know, the New Testament so called. You know, a lot of these things, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament so called that was bearing witness of Yahweh Shai and the certain events that needed to come to pass prior to that. So, verse 2 Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, four winds of the heaven, the four winds of the heaven, strove upon the great sea. Right, and what you'll learn is the, you know, the four winds. That there represents you know, the four kingdoms. And you also there um, referred to as four horns. It's either in Zeph I think Zechariah 1 and uh, 18. It says, Then I lifted up my eyes, which is Zechariah 1, verse 18 and 19. Then lifted I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked to me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Right, so the four horns goes into the four kingdoms, right? And that's of Daniel's prophecy. You know, and we're going to get further in depth, reading on from verse 3. It's in a four, a four, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Right, so the four beasts, beasts just means animals. So they were, they were given a similitude of what an animal representation of what they were going to be like. So Daniel 7 and 4, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And you can look up. If you said that there's um there's many different cultures and, and uh, groups have got their own sort of um, model of this of this uh, beast here, yeah. And but Babylonians were using that. And what you'll see is if if you ever look into Hollywood, yeah, they they sort of have they're not sort of they do have a sort of similar you know beast, which proves what the well, firstly, this is represent, representing Babylon, the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. So it only stands to reason in mystery Babylon, they're going to use certain same similitudes. So it said, The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. So what you had is, you know, the, the um, you had Assyria and Babylon, and Assyria. You know, took down Babylon. Now it wasn't until yeah, you, know, you can look into the the dates and everything, but it wasn't really until Assyria fully fell down because they they were having infighting. Yeah, you know, they had certain interests that were um, the same. Yeah, you know, but I think it was the falling of and you can look this up and correct me. This is no by no means. Yeah, you know, this is just off the top of my head. Yeah, you know, there was a Nineveh, the ba a battle of Nineveh. That then led to you know Babylon having to stand up. Well, not having to, because it it, it had um, it, it had infighting within it, but there was also again you know, shared interest there. So then it got proud. Yeah, there wasn't a, a a next competitor with the same goals and everything in mind. You know, so Babylon got proud and was made to stand upon the feet as a man, like a big man. Yeah, it had it had to um, or it rather it had the chance you know, to finally. Come, come to what the fullness of what it was meant to be, you know, which was that, you know, terrific, meaning what terrifying, you know, scary, kingdom. 
and a man's heart, a man's labab. That was going into what heart, mind, the root word there for um, that is lab. So basically, a man's desire. And it was given unto it. Verse five, and it says, "And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh." Now this is representing the next the next kingdom to rise up in chronological order, which would be the Medo or the Medo Persian Empire. Right, and you can read all about that in Daniel 8. Yeah, and then there was, there was um, in fact, we'll get it. And I think it's the 21, 21st verse, the 21th, the 21st verse that tells you about this. Uh, Daniel 8 and verse 21, and it said, And the rough goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So you can read, you know, Maccab first Maccabees 1 and 7 will tell you that, um, or in fact, one and one will tell you, you know, Alexander, who was the son of Philip the Macedonian, and that even that goes back to um, who was out of Macedon. Let's just search up Macedon. Macedonia. So, like, bear with me, I'm just looking up the word Macedon. See where I can find that. Um, bear with me, I'm gonna have to pause it anyway. Right, so this is the additions of Esther 16 and 10 for Haman, which means what Haman, a Macedonian, the son of Amad Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood and far and far distant from our goodness as a stranger received of us. Yes, yeah, so Haman, if we look at what Haman was, this is the book of, bear with me. There he is. Right, the book of Esther. The book of Esther 3 and 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of ha yeah, Hamade Hamadtha, Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. So Agag, when you read about that, you know, the Agagites goes back to E, man. So that's another link that you've got there for... Um, basically E and the land of Macedon. Not to say everyone in a certain land is of that, but that is a link, yeah, and, and it is true, he is that. Now, so Daniel 7 and 5 one more time. And behold, and behold, another beast, a second leg to a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. They said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Yeah, and this is talking about the Persia Median Empire or the Medo-Persian Empire, however you want to say it. Um, and Daniel 8 gives it, as we just read, yeah, it tells you about the Grecian king that came up, just as if we read in the Maccabees, yeah, just real quick, in fact, we'll get into that in a bit, Lord willing. But the, um, so the three, the three ribs of the, in the mouth of it represent the three um, provinces, or you know, bits of land they ruled over, which was uh, Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt. And I believe it was um, Cyrus that got Babylon, and Lydia and his son, uh, who's, the name escapes me right now, um, but I believe it was he who conquered Egypt, yeah, and that's when you can really say they had three yeah, ribs in the mouth of it, so that represents yeah, the, the sort of the lands that they ruled over at that point. Yeah, but you, you did have, um, the Persians dealt with us quite fairly, yeah, to give them credit where credit is due. You, know, you had um, obviously Cyrus who let us put, you know, rebuild the temple, and he, which was very clever of him from his perspective, because then yeah, we, we were able to be stronger in the spirit. You know, so we were able to pro be a stronger province for him to then what tax, yeah, and then to do trade with and such. We were able to, yeah, we were a much, much more profitable for us, of course, but also for him. Yeah, it wasn't just because. Yeah, it's it just pure kindness. Yeah, there was obviously a reason for it, because ultimately, when it was, it say Nehemiah five and nine. Yeah, the the heathen, our enemies. All right, so there you have it. Um, yeah, verse six. Yeah, this is what we really went into at camp. It says, and I beheld, and after this I beheld another and lo, and so like after this I beheld and lo another like a leopard, 
which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it. So that's talking about, you know, Alexander's four generals. They were then, from there, that's who took, who took the kingdom. And as I said, you know, we'll read it now when we're going to touch on the, uh, the Haman issue. So first Maccabees 1 and 1, and it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chetim, it had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. And he also had Darius, you know, I believe it was 16 years after. Yeah, then he let us, you know, further continue that, if you like. That Darius, the king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So you remember when we read in Daniel, the eighth chapter, about the first king over Grecia? Well, who's that? Alexander, it's telling you there. So you can read about, you know, the one that came up higher. And it was a, not, not the same thing exactly, but a similar thing in terms of, yeah, Assyria, Babylon, it took two. It takes two to tango, as they say. You know, it took two, and you had the Medio Persians, the Medes, you know, which go back to Madai, Japheth, and then the uh, Persian, Parash, which means, I believe, to cut. Um, or to. Uh, uh, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, I don't want to be giving out them false informations there. I, I might be thinking of the um, you know, Palag, Peleg. Because in his days, yeah, that's when the earth was divided. Persia. Parash. Fars. Yeah, it's not giving me a lot on the etims. If I search up Persia here. The word for Persia is... Paras, not Parash, Salakia. Paras, which it says um, pure or splendid. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't confirm nor deny. <laughs> Who's that? The brother, uh, the brother Jordan. You know, from back when me and uh, Iowa used to get into all them debates and shit. Anyway, the Ma first Maccabees one and seven. So Alexander reigned twelve years and died. Verse eight, and his servants bear rule everyone in his place. Verse 9, and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves, so did their sons after many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. And so that's that. Yeah, that's the uh, the leopard, and he was called a leopard because he, you know, how swift he conquered. I believe it was only, it took him uh, 12 years to conquer a fucking shitload of, pro of um, provinces, man. Uh, verse 6, after this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, and the beast also had, um, also had four heads and dominion was given to it. You know, verse seven. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had 10 horns. Now this is going into the fourth kingdom, which was the Roman Empire, you know, and, and the, also, um, <laughs> yeah, in the in the eighth verse where it talks about that little horn, they try and say that was Alexander, but it can't be Alexander, you know, because he was he was that swift leopard, yeah, he was the one that conquered all them places so quickly. Um, I'm just aware, yeah, I don't want to rush it, so maybe we'll do a, a third video on this, but I also have to get back on onto something. Yeah, but this is 2nd Ezra, 2nd Ezra's 11 of 39, it says, Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, and that the end of their times might come through them? Yeah, so the end of the time had to come through, meaning what? The end of the time of all the heathen nations, their rulership had to come through that <laughs> them. 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And you know what? What else proves that um, that little horn in the seventh, in the eighth verse? Sorry, Daniel seven and eight, which is I considered among the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were before whom there were were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in his horn. Were, were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things which also you know um, like a man just as Babylon <laughs> was stout ancient Babylon I'm referring to there just as Babylon ancient Babylon was stout was as a man yeah this this kingdom this Babylon has eyes 
this um, eyes like a man. Yeah, among another little horn, that's the 11th horn. So that would be, it's not Alexander the Great because he's already, you know, deceased. Yeah, but it's going to be Mystery Babylon. All right. Verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, meaning all other heathen rulerships are fucked, done, through. Yeah. We're cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit. Now the Ancient of Days is talking about the Heavenly Father. We know that because the uh, Yahweh has a beginning. So, uh, uh, Revelation 22 and verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. Yeah, so you can't, the before, there was something before the first, you know, and there will be one that is after the last, even though our kingdom is lasting forever. Yeah, so there it says, I beheld to the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. And the head and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wills as burning fire. Yeah, so that proves it's talking about the heavenly father just through it being that. And it also proves, you know, that this is the last kingdom. Talking of Babylon the Great, so-called America, United States, is the last kingdom, you know, before the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Shaiman. That's what it would have to prove. Yeah, the thrones were cast down, meaning what all these other rulerships were cast down <laughs> they don't exist anymore but who, but who but the um the lord's kingdom now will last and will be there um, in place of it and supersede all the other ones man that was just a quick hit at you know, certain points you know we obviously wanted to focus on greece but even certain points that could have been touched and lightly i forgot or yeah, you know, the spirit didn't lead me to touch upon it so i pray that's edifying on to the next one lord willing all praises to yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham rakha kudash shalom